I mean, I think what um, Dean Spade calls distribution of life chances, right? I think I think that it controls everything about a person's life. And I often talk about and think about how the very kind of trajectory of a person's life can be shaped by one police encounter. And that can then sort of suck them into the machine that I just described that then sort of changes their entire um, experience of life on this planet. So I think, obviously I think of the impacts of people who are living in cages, surviving in cages, um, being tortured in cages, experiencing tremendous violence and isolation and violation and just wasted time. I, one thing I hear from people who are incarcerated is just how incredibly boring it is and how they feel they have so much else that they could be doing that would be a contribution. And I'm um, constantly struck by people who I'm in contact with inside or who I represent who are are writing books, are, are doing, are getting degrees, are doing whatever they can to make that time um, useful to them. And just how much wasted potential is caged in America or in the U.S. And so I think that's one thing I think about, but then I just also think kind of more broadly, and I think it's something that you've taught me, is um, just how much it, the prison industrial complex, the impact of it is that it's limited how we think about how we respond to any kind of harm or any kind of problem in society. In that even when we're thinking about alternatives to um, prisons, we're still thinking about punishment and we're still thinking about containment and we're still thinking about isolation, exile, um, shame and just how limited our imagination is about what else there might be as a way of preventing and addressing harm.